right, well, I um, first heard of Laterno University in 1984. I had graduated from uh, University of Wisconsin at Platteville, where it was a degree in mechanical engineering. And I spent the summer in Quito, Ecuador on a summer mission, sort of an internship kind of thing with an uh, organization called HCJB Radio. And they take college students from around the country and put them to work for the summer, t typically in their disciplines. And, um, and so I did that for the summer. And there was, there was 24 of us on that team, and there was three or four students from Laterno University. And so that was the first time I heard of a Christian engineering school. And so that was pretty cool. I thought that was uh, actually pretty amazing. And so time went on, and uh, I went on uh, to uh, grad school at the University of California, Berkeley. And, um, Berkeley was a lot different than UW Platteville. Um, Berkeley's everything you've heard of and more. I uh, thought I might want to be a professor. I had a good relationship with my professors at, uh, in my undergrad uh, experience. It was a teaching university. We didn't have a grad program there. And I uh, liked what they did and uh, thought I might want to do that. But Berkeley was, was uh, quite different. And so I just say that I escaped with my master's and got out into industry and, and uh, uh, 30 years later, my thoughts of being a professor were far in the rearview mirror. Um, we, uh, most of those 30 years were in uh, Washington State after I graduated from Berkeley. I uh, worked for a few uh, companies in the research uh, side, but ended up at the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory in Richland, Washington. And that's where uh, we raised our family, uh, five kids, uh, grew up. We eventually moved out to the country, had a little, built our dream home out there, family farm, uh, along with a, a very good engineering job. And so my oldest son, uh, when he came time for him to go to college, he was interested in aviation. And so Laterno was on his list. He did his own research and, and uh, found Laterno. And, and so we came out here for a preview in 2009. <laughs> And uh, we were pretty impressed with the school uh, there. And uh, um, he decided to come here. And so we came out here for new student orientation and uh, <clears throat> saw that and experienced that. And then uh, three years later, uh, three and a half years later, we were out here for, for graduation, December of 2013. And so we saw what a uh, great school it was. We saw the, the impact that uh, the integration of faith and learning has had on him, uh, the, the relationship he had with his professors, um, just a fantastic school and experience. So, um, so let's see, five, six years later, uh, well, from the time he started, in um, <clears throat> 2015, my youngest son is getting ready to go to college and looking at what he wants to do, and he's interested in engineering, uh, more likely engineering technology is what I was really steering him for because he's very hands-on young man, not very academic necessarily, uh, really surprised he was interested in going to college. And um, so I said, well, why don't, we, why don't we focus on engineering technology? So we, we uh, came out here for a preview, fall of 2015. And, uh, and so during that preview, very, very well done preview here at Laterno, uh, very impressed with that. Um, I ended up in a casual conversation with the Dean of Engineering uh, over dinner, because <clears throat> they have dinner with the faculty, part of the preview. And I told him a little bit about what I do at uh, PNNL, and he told me that he had a position open. <laughs> and I said, good luck with that. Uh, <clears throat> hope the Lord brings the right guy for your position. I'll, I'll pray for you. And uh, I really didn't intend to think anything of it. We were anchored in Washington. We were, we were set there. We'd lived there for, for now 26 years, uh, raised all our kids, had our dream home out in the country, and. Uh, I was not interested, maybe in the back of my mind when I retire, um, but not now. And so I really didn't intend to think anything of it. But apparently God had other plans because I really couldn't stop thinking about it. That was the end of October in uh, 15. And uh, a couple of weeks went by and all I'm thinking about is professor at Laterno and what a great school Laterno is. And I'm thinking, this is ridiculous. Um, you need to stop thinking about that. And finally, I basically prayed to God and said, Lord, this, if it's real, you need to make it real. Um, otherwise, you need to make it go away because <laughs> it's a little bit distracting right now. And, um, 
And so I, I actually set out a fleece and, and set up a situation with God. I don't normally make decisions. I can't ever remember doing this before, make a decision based on a, a fleece, kind of setting up a situation where if it happens this way, then that must be a sign from God. Well, actually, both ways, it was a sign from God. But this is a sign that I would take if this situation that I set up happened in a certain way, that uh, I would take that as a sign that I should apply. And uh, it wasn't an impossible situation by any means. It was... Uh, something fairly reasonable um, that could have gone 50-50, but God ended up answering in the positive way, according to my scenario, in a way that was very much not how I had expected it. It was very amazingly and obviously something that God had orchestrated. And so I said, okay, I'll apply. And so I, I worked on the application, filled it out. Now we're at the, the beginning of December and um, uh, sent it in about uh, the beginning of January. And uh, they were, the posting said they were interested in, in uh, somebody starting in January. And I'm like, this is, there's no way that can happen. In fact, I, you know, I thought, this is, there's no way this is going to happen anyway. I thought God was wanting me to be willing to lay my life and stuff on the altar, right? I still get emotional thinking about it. And um, if I was just willing, why? It would just, we'd get it all back and, and blessed uh, even more. And so I said, sure, I'll go through with this. And I sent off the application. I got a, I got a call uh, pretty quickly from uh, the search committee to set up an interview. And so we, we uh, talked there about the middle of January. We talked. Um, they asked me questions. I asked them questions. Um, it was sort of interesting. Um, they said they're looking at several people. They'd let me know the next step uh, when that happened. Uh, probably a couple weeks later, I get a call from the dean of faculty. And I don't know the academic roles very much, um, but uh, I figured this guy's important. But I really had it in my mind that the best they'd say is, uh, hey, great resume, a um, little short on teaching experience. Maybe you should adjunct at your local uh, community college or something, get some experience, and, uh, and then we'll talk in a few years before we go investing in you. And, um, and so Steve Mason called me, and uh, I figured this is the thanks but no thanks call. And, um, but he's going on and on in this, in this call like it's real. He's asking me more questions. Um, uh, and I said, finally, Steve, I said, you know, in case you hadn't noticed, and of course I knew he had, that I'm, I'm 30 years out of school. I haven't been in an academic classroom since graduate school. Why are you interested? And he says, John, the classes have all been taught before. The notes are available. The faculty colleagues are collegial. We want your experience. I didn't have a response to that. Um, so he said the same thing, though, that uh, they were looking at a couple other people, perhaps, and, and, uh, but they'd, they'd be back in touch with me. The next step would be an on-site interview. And of course, I'd have to do a teaching demonstration. And I thought, well, that'll be it. Uh, <laughs> that, that'll, that'll pretty much seal the, the non-deal here. Um, so, but he, he called a couple of weeks later and said, uh, hey, we'd like to have you out here for an on-site, and uh, please make plans and so I arranged the plans to the, our travel to be to coincide with some a trip we already planned to take back east um, and uh, and and so before I could say my wife will be with me he said and bring your wife because this is a family decision that's pretty much unheard of in industry uh, it's, it's you and you alone and so so we came out here um, uh, flew out and uh, uh, interviewed for the day. Uh, it was a very, uh, it was a wonderful experience here. Um, I did do a teaching demonstration. It was sort of interesting because I had not done any engineering for years. Uh, I was basically management, and uh, I was still on the technical side of management, but I was not doing any anything uh, uh, foundational or fundamental. And so I was able to put together a talk on um, a teaching on uh, radiation, uh, because that's what I work with. I work with a, a fair amount of, of uh, technology in radiation detection arena. And so I would, wanted to be the expert, and I figured that most people here didn't know about that kind of stuff. And, uh, and so I guess it went, it went uh, okay. Um, 
Steve Mason called back uh, a couple weeks later, and uh, or maybe just a week later. I think he called a week later. No, he was on vacation that week, and um, so the week after he called back, and and uh, we chatted for a few minutes. We told him what a great time we had, uh, and actually, when when my wife and I at the end of the day, we said we looked at each other and said, if they're interested, we are too. And um, and so Steve was calling. Uh, I told him that, that uh, just to let you know, we thank you very much but, uh, for, for, the, for the great time and, and we're interested uh, if you are, just to let you know. He says, well, good, because I'm offering you the job. <sighs> wow. So um, we hadn't thought through the implications of it, but um, uh, in fact, what was one thing that was sort of funny is, is that uh, we had toured with my son. We toured several other universities in, in, the, in the Northwest. And... Uh, and then I take this job, and finally, um, this is now uh, about the end of March. And uh, I told David that, uh, you know, it looks like we're, we're going to move to Longview. And I'm going to work at Laterno. What are you going to do? <laughs> well, he was interested in going far, far away. <laughs> His hopes was to go to Laterno and uh, be far away from home, not somewhere nearby. Uh, but it turns out Laterno is the only place he sent his application in for. So he ended up coming in here, too. So we both came here. Uh, we put our house on the market. Um, I actually figured that, that I'd laid out the one fleece. The second fleece, as Gideon put out two, would be the sale of our home. And obviously everything had lined up very well so far um, that our home should sell pretty well. We built a pretty unique home. And so uh, we put it on the market, didn't get one offer. Come July, and I told Steve Mason that I couldn't afford to take the job on the salary and my um, uh, have the house payments. And so he said, he said, that's fine. If we have to work with you till January, we'll do that. So just one thing after another uh, made us very impressed about this place. Um, so we ended up uh, coming out here. David and I came. Our house ended up selling uh, a month and a half later uh, after we committed to coming um, here at the end of July, which was another story. But uh, so I've been here since 2016, started in the fall of 16. I've been here for three years, and um, it's just amazing. The, uh, this is a Christian university. It's not Christian in name only. This is a place where God was inviting me to come take the last quarter of my career, presumably, no guarantees, but, uh, and turn it back to the next generation at a school that requires their faculty to be Christians and expects them to build the faith of their students. We give devotionals in class every day. Students are required to go to chapel. Professors get to go to chapel. I knew all that because my son had, had been involved. I was looking forward to being uh, part of the chapel experience here and getting to do that every day. Because you don't get chapel out in the working world <laughs> middle of the week. You don't get to do that. And I encourage students in that, in that area, take advantage of what you have here. Go to chapel. Take notes on the devotionals. Add it to your own theological ditty bag. So we're able to integrate faith and learning. What we do in the classroom is to integrate faith components, even into engineering uh, classes. One of the, the things that's been exciting for me is uh, to take the engineering technology measurements lab that they assigned me, that I took over for a guy who retired, uh, he's been here for almost 20 years, and I think he brought equipment with him when he came, and so it was pretty old equipment when he got here. And uh, So I've, I've tried to work with that equipment, but it's not the equipment, it's the experience. It's taking uh, little laboratory uh, uh, activities and helping the students understand principles that God has interwoven into engineering and science. And so we study measurements, and we study measurements in the Bible, and I was able to uh, do some investigation on that myself independently. And I, uh, the first year I was here, the Christian Engineering Conference was held uh, the following summer. And I submitted a, a paper for me observations on measurements in the Bible. And we, we didn't look at obvious stuff like Noah's Ark, measuring that, and, and uh, the size of, of the New Jerusalem. But we uh, looked at some, some deep stuff on uh, measuring faith and um, measuring time and what God uses for those things, and the things that God is important, feels are important. Uh, the weights in your bag that are supposed to be honest, that that's what God is interested in. Honest measurements, the standards for accuracy are, are from God. 
Your secular counterparts don't have a basis for it. It's just a good idea. One man's good idea is another man's bad idea. So those come from God. So we try to uh, incorporate those kind of things into our, our classroom. So I'm just thrilled to be here. It's, uh, it's been a great experience. I wasn't looking for uh, a, another job, much less a career change. Uh, but it's been, it's been a tremendous experience and I've seen God's hand throughout the whole way. Thank you.